The nation's top ranking first belonged to the defending champion, but in the strangest season in years, the mantle of number one has been too heavy a burden for six different teams. But like North Carolina before it, Arkansas has grabbed the top rung of the ladder for a second time around. The second time around at being number one is a lot different maybe than the first time. I think anything you get the first time, it's one of the most uh, enjoyable things you're going to get because it's the first that you've ever had. Uh, second time is a little bit different. I think being able to be there at first and getting it again for the second time, it's like, again, you just go back to it's business as usual. Climbing that mountain has been easier than staying atop it. Arkansas, five weeks the first time, two weeks now in its second trip. North Carolina four. The rest were only pretenders for a mere week atop the heap. And now the top team in the land comes to the Georgia Coliseum in Athens tonight as the 20 and two Razorbacks meet the Bulldogs of Georgia. And hi again, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler with Larry Conley. Welcome to Athens, Georgia tonight as Georgia entertains the number one team in the country. They are number one, quite simply, Larry, because they do what they do best. A great defense. It's great pressure defense. You know, in football, they have a term for it, give away, take away. When in basketball lingo, we talk about turnover margin. And it's positive, that's good. When it's negative, it isn't. Arkansas leads the SEC in turnover margin with 6.2. That means they're getting six more than their opponents are giving. But you know the one guy for Georgia that's got to take care of the basketball to make it right is Bernard Davis. And really taking care of the basketball is so important against his pressure defense. It rests squarely on his shoulders. New Durham changed his offense a couple of games ago. Davis has been the recipient. He's been the leading scorer in four of those six games. Really, the last time they struggled was that Notre Dame game you and I did at the Omni. Since that time, they've been playing real well. They're coming off an impressive win over LSU over the weekend. Back to Arkansas, though. Clint McDaniel doesn't even start for them. He was out earlier with an injury, missed three games. He's the catalyst, though, for that. Yeah, defense. he really is the trigger man for this defense. When they insert him into the lineup, he's the guy that really is the best defender on the basketball. When you talk about somebody that'll get after the basketball, this is the guy you want to put it on. Clint McDaniel really Mr. D at Arkansas. And when you talk about defense at Arkansas under Nolan Richardson, you talk about, you guessed it, 40 minutes of hell. That's what they call it. This is the kind of defense that forces turnovers on one end and can make it turn into instant offense on the other. It's Arkansas and Georgia in the SEC coming up next. Super Tuesday continues from the Georgia Coliseum in Athens. Let's meet the number one team in the country, the Arkansas starting lineup. Corliss Williamson, the 6'7 sophomore, the leading scorer and rebounder for this club with Thurman, Stewart, Remots, and Corey Beck. And as we said, it will be quickly Clint McDaniel off the bench for Nolan Richardson in his ninth year as the head man and ducks into the huddle resplendent in, uh, resplendent in royal blue here tonight in his ninth year at Arkansas. For the Bulldogs of Georgia, Shandon Anderson, they need his scoring. He's their top scorer at 13-3. He's been down a little bit in recent games. Davis, Claxton, Jackson, and Strong will join him for Hugh Durham's Dogs. Hugh in his 16th season in Athens. 278 wins here. Overall, he's over that magic 500 mark in his 28th college coaching career. And he's already started screaming. <laughs> we haven't even tossed it up yet. Brad, right, expect a good game here tonight. Georgia coming off a very impressive win in Baton Rouge over LSU. A game in which Charles Claxton, because of the change in the offense, has turned into a screener and less of a post player inside. Let's see if he can maintain that tonight against the beef inside for the Razorbacks. Williamson and Claxton, and it's Claxton that controls the chip. Important matchup right here is Corey Beck against Bernard Davis. Right at the top, you see Davis with that ball. He's got to take care of it. Anderson cut off on the baseline. Thurman almost came up with a steal. Let, let Davis alone for three. He's been doing that pretty well this year. Has he ever? His 70th three-pointer of the season. They've got Carlos Strong on Williamson. Nice matchup. Size is about the same. Claxon has to go out and guard Stewart. Stewart comes up short, and Strong will pull off the miss. Davis runs it to Anderson. Shandon on the baseline. 5 nothing Georgia. For a better start for the Bulldogs than that. Williamson, triple team, got his own rebound. And drew a foul. Brad, there are a lot of things about Corliss Williamson's game that I really, really like, but I think if I had to list them, the number one category I would list is his strength inside and his ability to go after the basketball after a missed shot. 
Got an interesting little haircut there. I was going to say, I thought that's what you were going to say you liked the most about him. I tease him about it before the ball game. I said, Corliss, who did it? He said, I did it myself. I said, what do you call it? So he fought for the entire half an hour of warm-ups and shrugged a little a couple minutes ago as if to say, I don't know. I said, there's got to be something there. The core lid, the core curl, there's got to be a name for it somewhere. He's some kind of player. Very genial young man and a terrific basketball player. Really, I think, playing for SEC Player of the Year honors. He has Arkansas's first point. They trail by four. A pass. Anderson handles it. Davis open momentarily. Short that time. Remots, who was late to get over the cover, and goes down the rebound. Pretty tough job for Claxton. They have to come out front to guard Stewart. Thurman. Strong is second board. Davis was looking for an alley oop. Dishes it to Anderson underneath. Williamson blocked it. Second try. Still no go, but a foul. Some real activity by this Georgia Bulldog club on that offensive glass. Nice pass by Davis inside to Anderson, and they crashed it. Both Claxton and Anderson right on top of it. Davis with the dish, Anderson with a chance now from the free throw line. Bernard Davis had eight three-point goals against Tennessee. In fact, he was eight for eight in that game. SEC record in that one. Broke the Georgia mark of Latero Green and the SEC mark for proficiency from outside the arc. Here's Again. Shandon leading the team, as we said, in a lot of categories. I've been playing well recently, though, Brad. Tonight's his night. He's off to a four-point start. Steve Jones checks in. Cleveland Jackson will sit next to Hugh Durham. Interesting substitution early there. I think maybe he wanted to tell Jackson about something that was happening on the floor. Maybe about playing defense. <laughs> you never know. Nice cut by Beck. Good pass by Williamson. They Triple team, and they force a turnover. And Anderson walked with it. So a turnover for turnover on each hand. One of the things that really has plagued Georgia all year has been the fact that they turned the ball over a lot. We talked about that turnover margin at the top of the show. This is a club that actually has had more turnovers than their opponents have caused. You were right. That was a quick chat. Just enough to tell Cleveland Jackson something. Steve Jones has a chuckle about it. He actually spent about eight seconds on the floor, and he's back on the bench, and Jackson back in there. Arkansas 0 for 3 to start the game from the floor. But for a moment there, Georgia's going to pick up full court. They decided to back off. And an Anderson responsibility for Corey Beck. Georgia's playing a straight man to man. Strong and Williamson really battling inside. Stewart can shoot that three. Missed that one though. Rematch will keep it alive. And Stewart will run it down. No over and back call because it was touched by Georgia, but they threw it away anyway. It's Arkansas club in the Southeastern Conference while they've been in it have been 20 and 2 at home 13 and 9 on the road. George has played better at conference basketball on the road than they have at home. Jackson lost it back to back turnovers for the dogs and a foul on top of it from Carlos Strong. Oh Brad I look out there and I see Stewart. I see Williamson. I see Strong. I see Beck. I see a lot of very physically strong players out there. There is some meat on the floor tonight. There's White. He's one of the heftiest. He knows how to use it, too. I left Claxton out. He's almost 270. Claxton, a seven-footer on Stewart right now. Stewart still thinking about a backdoor pass to Thurman and back to Stewart. Great looking play. Oh, Scott Thurman made a terrific pass. A good look and a nice reception that time by Stewart. He got it and laid it in. First field goal of the night for top rank Arkansas. It's White Stewart off the give and go. Claxton ran right into Beck, trying to wheel for a hook shot, left Davis alone. He drives and puts it high off the glass, and Claxton with a follow, they're going to wave it off. No that's the aggressiveness, no, that's what Hugh Durham's been wanting to see all year. And I tell you what, Hugh won't criticize Claxton for that move, you're absolutely right. Coming off a 14 point, 15 rebound, 7 block shot effort in Baton Rouge on Saturday. Stewart, he's 
out there again. This Boy, time he got it. He can do that. Yep. I saw him hit four of those against Memphis State earlier in the year. He is a big guy who can fill it from outside the arc, and he brings his team to within one. Seven to six Bulldogs. And we're about three and a half minutes in from Athens. Anderson, nice leave inside to Claxton, but he had trouble handling it, and part of it was because he was fouled. Wallace Williamson picks up his first. Right, so far, uh, Georgia's been able to get the ball inside on Arkansas's defense. They just haven't been able to get the ball up. Claxton really a little too slow pulling that trigger in there. And Arkansas goes to his own defense. They match up out of this 2-3. They really trap well out of it, too. Anderson, nice slice to the hole. Good look. The quick move got by Stewart. The one quick step by Shandon Anderson. Looks like he's ready to turn it on tonight. He is. He's got six early. Three months around a pick. Wave it off. Offensive foul on Scotty Thurman. Beck with a very little pressure this time on Davis. One of the things that I think Corey Beck is very good at is just wearing guards down. He's so physically strong and he's in such great shape. I just think he gets to a lot of guards. With about 30 minutes to go, the guys are breathing hard. Claxton, nice move, but he couldn't finish it. Strong with a rebound, and he puts it in. So far, if you've got to give high marks to Georgia, it's got to be their offensive rebounding. Williamson up high with a hook. Georgia ball again. Top-ranked Arkansas rattled a little bit early. 15.48 to go in the half, and they trail Georgia by five. A couple of games in the Big East. BC and Pittsburgh first. Isley taking it to the glass. It's blocked. Huckabee follows that one and knocks it down. Boston College is taking the lead. Georgetown at Villanova. Villanova is taking control. Jason Lawson gets bumped by Don Reeve but still converts it. Plus the foul. And they lead by 12. Brad Lamb. All right, John, here in the Southeastern Conference, it's Georgia leading top-ranked Arkansas by five because they're shooting so well, as they did against LSU over the weekend. Off to a 50% start. They shot 58% against the Tigers on Saturday. Arkansas cold at two for seven. Right, a lot of that has been Georgia's follow-up on their own missed shots. They're That's going right. in and getting their own on the offensive glass. Shannon Anderson's going to play a little point now to try to free up Bernard Davis. Nice screen they got back. Good double team by Arkansas. Well, they do a great job of trapping out of this zone defense. Regroup for Georgia with 14 on the shot clock. You just look knew there was a steal the coming. Oh, yeah. Scotty Thurman alone. For the reverse, nope, just a straightaway slam. Beck's got the quick hands. You better pass the ball or move it. Don't stand and hold it. He'll get it from you. You could just smell that turnover coming, the way Georgia was handling the ball and having it probably in the wrong guy's hands to handle it. And watch the zone trap. They really do a nice job out of this. Strong, good looking move off the pick. Carlos has four. Georgia by five. Heck, not much of a threat from beyond that three point arc. He hasn't thrown up at about seven shots beyond that three point range. Remont's had it stripped by Davis. And now Stewart's out of dribbles. 12 on the shot block for Arkansas. Scotty Thurman over Jackson. Jackson will rebound the miss. Georgia showing some pretty good patience after their rebounds. In past games, they've been known to come down and try to rush it. Instead, they're taking pretty good care of it. Shannon Anderson over Remots. Strong tried to get another offensive rebound. Couldn't handle this one. Luke McDaniel, the guy we talked about in the open, set to check in for Arkansas. Here comes Mr. D. McD, huh? McDaniel. <laughs> McDefense. <laughs> Remots will get a breather. And also, Darnell Robinson will come in, the big freshman, and Dwight Stewart. Right, one, of the, one of the things I think Nolan Richardson really has a big advantage over the other clubs he's played against this year are the options he has. He's got so many different players, size, quickness, depth, strength. He can go just about any way he wants to go. 
with legitimate depth. A lot of minutes by a lot of players. Georgia has come off their bench, too, with Terrell Bell in for Claxton. And Terrell has a gift rebound in his opening seconds. I don't know if he wants to dribble it up the court, though. Doesn't look like he's too anxious for that job. <laughs> Shannon Anderson found an alley. Had it stripped as well, he went up. Did Corey Beck make a terrific play? He worked his way around the screen, caught up with Anderson at the baseline, and slapped it away. This guy is so good. Good win for Temple, just barely over Duquesne. The club has been playing very well of late. DC looks like they may have one. And Virginia's come back on Georgia Tech. Jackson, nice bounce pass to Straw. Good look by Cleveland Jackson. Biggest Georgia advantage, up by seven. Strong does something well on one end and comes down and gets a cheap foul on the other. Brad, take a look again. Look at Shandon Anderson. Now watch Beck catch him. Left part of your screen. Comes all the way around and is able to slap the ball away. That is a great defensive play. I'm going to say that a lot, I'm gonna say that a lot about this guy this year. Leads the club in steals. Robinson right back into Williamson off the inbound. Good high-low action there. Good look. Robinson with a nice pass. That's Corliss Williamson's first field goal. Whoop, nobody home on that one. Bertha Robinson going one way, Bernard Davis going the other. Georgia with its fifth turnover. Well, Dathan Brown didn't even look up. He was just heading straight to the basket. Yeah, I beg your pardon, Dathan Brown, not Bertha Robinson. Bertha's on the bench. We don't want to give him any bad, bad pup. <laughs> Robinson can shoot it from out there, but another good pass, and Anderson's going to commit the foul. Corliss Williamson so strong, Shannon Anderson hit him in midair, and he almost still got the shot off. All right, think about the way they, they set this offense up. They take their post man, which obviously is Darnell Robinson, or Dwight Stewart when he's in the game, move him to the top. Now look at McDaniel. Give him the basketball at the top, then he drops it inside to Corliss Williamson, who's the power forward. Makes it really tough, and they spread that offense so wide, nobody can help. Corey back and he's fouled by Shannon Anderson. That's two in a hurry on Shannon Anderson. This Arkansas team will take the ball to the basket. You've got to be prepared. Move your feet, move your hands. You can't reach and hold. Bulldogs do not want Shannon Anderson in any further foul trouble, that's for sure. The freshman Robinson over Bell. Shows you a little bit of the versatility right there of Robinson. He can shoot it from three-point range, or he can take it inside. Here comes that press from Arkansas. Georgia just got it in. In time, now Davis will push it up. Brown, nice hook pass underneath to Anderson. Nice move by Brown. They double up on Davis. When he gives it up, it's got to leave somebody open. Anderson's been open on that baseline. Roger Crawford has just checked in for Arkansas. Look at that pass. That is a great pass. Corey back. Put the ball in the hands of the guy when he wants it, when he wants to receive it. Alan Crawford. Brad, once again, watch Corey Beck deliver that basketball. Williamson made the flash into the post, and as soon as he got open, the ball was there. It's like a good QB delivering the ball on the cut, just as the guy makes the turn. Corey Beck does that very, very well. And Alex Dillard has checked in. Instant offense comes in, and instant defense will sit down. Beck and McDaniel, two of the best defensive guards in the country on the same team here. Brown picked up his dribble. You can't do that against this Arkansas team. Keep the dribble alive or take it somewhere. Ty Wilson also in the Georgia lineup, an excellent three-point shooter. Cleveland Jackson, double team, put up a shot anyway. Terrell Bell got the offensive board. And he's fouled. That's tough work inside by Terrell Bell. Georgia continues to do the nice work on the offensive glass. Bulldogs again going up on the miss by Jackson. Watch Bell work into position to try to get this ball away from Arkansas defenders. He does. Goes back up strong between Williamson and Robinson. Terrell will hit about half of them from the free throw line. 6'11 sophomore played his high school ball right here in Athens. Cedar Shoals, huh? 
Georgia is last in the Southeastern Conference in free throw shooting. Just under 60%. They were 20 of 35 against LSU and still won over the weekend. That's well, he didn't hit half of them this time either, but it caromed off the rim so high that Cleveland Jackson had a chance for it. Still Arkansas ball on the possession arrow. We've got an official timeout with 11.34 to go in the half. Georgia still up by three. Bizarre ending to the BC pit game. That's Gerard Abram. Easy layup, right? He misses it. The breakaway. BC is still up by three, though. So Terrence Agalu launches a three-pointer and ties the game. But Gerard Abram has another chance with a breakaway layup. He misses it. Danye Abram misses it. Pitt has a chance. They come down the other end and dribble the ball out of bounds. Meantime, Gerard Abram gets another chance. Throws this one up, and the three-pointer goes in. BC gets the win. Wow. Try to do it the hard way, huh? What a finish. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of threes, Georgia leads by three. With 11.34 left, first half, Brad Nessler and Larry Conley in Athens. Corliss Williamson getting a breather on the Arkansas bench. Off to a five-point start. He has shown his strength inside of this ball game so far. Arkansas throws it away. Robinson trying to get it to Wilson. They got the two freshman postmen in there right now. Lee Wilson, who's 6'11", Darnell Robinson at 6'11". How about their future at Arkansas? You think they're all right for postmen? Both about 265. Look at McDaniel. Tough Robinson, Robinson, Robinson at the point. Routine on the shot clock. Nice look with a left hand. Dathan Brown missed it, but he was fouled. Well, Georgia's done a nice job of running their half-court offense. A lot of screens across the lane. They hung Wilson up that time. Robinson tried to go help. Bertha Robinson had some zip on that pass with a left hand, a one-hander down the lane. It ends up being free throws. Dathan Brown, 6'5", junior, out of Douglas High School in Atlanta. Of a mismatch on the inside. Brown very quick to that baseline. I think Arkansas won't be able to keep up with those guys. If they can keep their dribble alive out front and keep the penetration going, they'll find some open people down there underneath. It's a problem with having two 6 11 guys out there. One of them has to guard somebody, and he normally is going to be a little bit quicker, and that's the case. Cleveland Jackson in. Steve Jones sits. Durham changing his defense now. Full court pressure. And Wilson and Robinson, the two 6 11 guys in the backcourt. You'd rather have them on the other end. Now they get it to McDaniel. And Clint's double team. Nice defensive job by Georgia with the track. Yeah, they ran off 15 seconds on the shot clock that time, so Arkansas now with a little less time to set their offense. We get it, Darnell says. Oh, and he takes oh, and buries a three. Oh, what a talent he is. 19-17, Georgia's lead cut to two. Dogs have one three-pointer. That was Bernard Davis, as you might guess, the top three-point shooter. He's not in the lineup right now. This is a three, though. Claxton on the offensive glass. And he got the rebound and put it back in. Well, again, Georgia continues to do terrific work on that offensive backboard. Just the number one rebounding team in the Southeastern Conference in Arkansas. Nice move by Crawford. Crawford's going to have a chance for a three-point play. Terrific move. He got the ball on the wing, a little crossover step, and he blew right by Jackson. Nathan Brown's the guy that slapped him on the way to the hoop. Good-looking move by Crawford. A chance for a three-point play. Roger, one of the seniors on this team. And Arkansas is going to have another chance. They kept playing volleyball with it until somebody could get their hands on it. Well, Robinson's got the advantage against Brown inside and then get it to him. Now he pops back out. Crawford again goes through traffic and gets it to Beck on the baseline. Tie game. First time tonight. Ty will 
Wilson. This three comes off to Robinson. Arkansas has not led in this game. Steve Jones will push it for the Bulldogs. Jason Brown they couldn't get it to go down. Boy, there was a major collision in the lane. No foul call. Clint McDaniel. Fans thought he called him the ball. No call there. No, it's an interrupted dribble. The ball just bounced high and he grabbed it and pulled it back in. Wilson lost a handle. Now he and Claxton in a rundown, and Wilson grabs Claxton. Time in the ACC, Georgia Tech and Virginia, two teams fighting for their postseason lives. Villanova. Villanova continues to win. Wow. I'd say they played themselves back in the contention for the NCAA tournament. It's one of your teams that you yeah, think I, if they put a nice really run have. together. Right at the end here, if they can get a roll on with a couple of other teams I've got around the country, I tell you, I think Villanova's right there. What a nice job Steve Lapis has done, huh? Here comes Dwight. And out goes Darnell. Charles Claxton at the free throw line. I'm not going to say what Charles shoots from the strike. We're just going to let him have at it tonight. See how that works? Well, the crowd knows what he shoots. <laughs> <laughs> the guys in the truck know what he shoots. <laughs> That's Georgia as a team, though, last in the Southeastern Conference. And we'll put it this way. Charles shoots a little bit worse, considerably worse than Georgia does as a team from the strike. I think he's got both of these. Nope, that was wrong. See, if he just stayed quiet, it would have gone in. <laughs> Watch Beck handle the basketball. Wilson's got the assignment on him now. Nice job by Robinson on the steal. Hertha tried to leave it for Dathan Brown. And instead, there's going to be a foul on Robinson. Beck with another charge. Guy's taking it. It's his 29th charge in his 23rd game. Watch Bertha Robinson right here. Could have gone either way. Tough to see from that angle. We told you about Corey Beck earlier leading the team in steals. He leads them in charges taken, too, as Larry just mentioned. And he'll get to shoot free throws off this one. Tell you, it's hard to pin down one guy on this Arkansas squad that you really think is the leader, the one guy that really takes over this club. Because everybody has a role that they play very well. And I think Beck is probably as important as any guy they've got on that floor. Delivers the basketball, a good defender. Georgia still hasn't relinquished the lead. And in front by one. Georgia continues that full court pressure. Scotty Thurman's been quiet on offense. Till now. That puts Arkansas in front. First time tonight. Remonts. 24-22, the Razorbacks with seven minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the first half. The top-ranked team in the country finally in front, but by only a field goal. So you want to be number one. Well, here's how it's gone, the chronology of number one this year. Carolina beaten by UMass. Kentucky had it for a while and then lost to Indiana. Alabama, a winner over Arkansas, one of their two SEC losses. Then Carolina a second time. Kansas, UCLA, Duke. Carolina got it again, and Georgia Tech let them have it again. And finally, Arkansas the second time around, and now they have held the top spot for longer than anybody. Seven weeks combined in their two trips to the top of the heap. Two of the reasons why the Razorbacks are back on top. There's the third one, Scotty Thurman. Thurman's three put Arkansas in front for the first time tonight, 24 22. Arkansas changes defenses again. Looks like they zone out of this, but watch the top two guards, Beck and Thurman. It's almost like a tandem zone. Beck's out on top, and then Davis throws it away. Stewart trying to tap it to Beck, and he does save it to Remots. And then knocked away by Steve Jones. 
the way they float those two guards out there they've got one pressuring the ball and the other one kind of lays back in the free throw line and, and then he, they seem to alternate when the ball reverses and they are fast quick to the ball very very quick to the ball every time you think an opponent should be putting up a shot you realize by the time they think about it there's a guard in their face Williamson in low he's almost unstoppable there when he gets that ball with his back to the basket I don't know if anybody can stop that shot the dogs down by four in need of some offense again watch Beck float back down inside now Thurman's on the ball Ball reverses. Now Beck comes out. Now watch Thurman drop down inside. Always the good spacing, the good angle. Beck's got it. Bernard Davis fouls it. Another steal, his 50th of the year, and a foul on Bernard Davis to boot. Now we go from Super Tuesday to Jammin' Wednesday tomorrow. And we'll start things off with Adrian Autry and the Orangemen of Syracuse hosting Seton Hall in the Big East. And then we've got number one tonight. Why not? Hey, number two tomorrow night. That'll work. Second ranked Duke in Tallahassee against Florida State. Mark Kellogg and I'll be down to watch that one in the ACC. That's tomorrow night. Jam and Wednesday on ESPN. Had a chance to watch Florida State last night against Florida. The Gators continue to win and roll. Florida State played very well last night. I thought Pat Kennedy's crew went into Gainesville and played a, had a good defensive effort last night. Claxton comes back in for Georgia. Bell will sit down. Anderson in and Jones out. Corey Beck, one of the players from Fairly High School in Memphis, one of three on this Arkansas team. He got both free throws. And again, Arkansas stretches its lead now to 6 28 22. And Anderson lost the ball. I think he thought, or at least wanted the official to think, that Scotty Thurman had touched it. Doesn't get the call. Well, Anderson really hurting them right now with turnovers. Remots leans. Williamson tried to tip it in, and Claxton fights for the rebound. Good defense by Claxton. He tried to block that shot, and then he swiped down the rebound. George has gone four and a half minutes without a field goal. What a pass by Davis. He almost threw that in the trombone section. <laughs> And that's a big section, the Trump. <laughs> <laughs> and now Bernard Davis just walks with it. That's an unforced error, if you will, just yeah. from thinking about the pressure. From about the 10-minute mark on, Brad, right now Georgia struggling taking care of the basketball. I think the pressure beginning to get to them. Williamson, nice passing low to Thurman. Can't connect. A little too deep, maybe. Now a foul call on Corey Beck. That's the other thing. He can play that great a defense and not pick up too many personal fouls. That's his first one to hurt. He's just very quick with his hands and his feet. The master of skullduggery. He just picks them up everywhere. Arkansas will go to its bench once again. Frank McDaniel will check in. Remots will come out. Bernard Davis, as Larry mentioned, to open the game, Georgia definitely needs his scoring as they have gotten the last six games. He's averaging 20 points a game. Only three tonight on one three-pointer. He can't hit the free throw either. But he did get his own rebound. And fed Claxton for two. Two and maybe three. A questionable three. Certainly two. Watch it again. Nathan Brown kept it alive, got it to Davis. He kicks it right back to Claxton, the one strong move. You know, in most cases, the officials will try to not make a call in that situation, but Claxton went up. You got to get out of the way of the big guys. They won't allow you to take that charge when you're standing underneath that basket. If you're going to take the charge, you got to be out of way from that basket. Free throw shooting on the year. Charles Claxton. Plank one up there. He's missed his last two after hitting his first one. Back to within four, 534 to go. First half from the Coliseum in Athens. Brad Nessler and Larry Conley with you. Whoa, that one almost went in. That was supposed to be a pass to Williamson. Instead, Thurman picks up the loose change and deposits it. I almost have to count that as a shot. <laughs> I mean, it hit the rim. Hit the rim, went around, it came out. 
Now again, watch the spacing on this zone defense by the Razorbacks. Crawford on the ball, and they double team, and Williamson gets it, throws it away. Each team with a turnover there. And now Crawford with a foul, his second. And Rolla Richardson looks at Crawford and says, what are you doing fouling over here in the backcourt in front of us? <laughs> Well, Something it, was a bad, like that. it really was a bad pass by Corliss Williams, and he led Crawford too much, and Davis is very quick down the floor. If you're going to make a pass like that, you've got to make sure you've got to get it to the right guy. Corey Beck right now sitting on the bench. He'll be there for long. Oh, Davis. 75% free throw shooter. You know he's not going to lose the stroke too often. There's what he's done on the season. Robinson and Jackson will check in, and Wilson and Anderson will sit for the Bulldogs. Just over five to go first half, four-point game. Top-ranked Arkansas leading Georgia. They move Claxton back inside. Herman threw up a three around a pick. A pretty good shot at it. It wouldn't go. And now the Bulldogs with Pertha Robinson ahead to Davis for three. And McDaniel trying to run it down, runs it out of bounds. Davis went over and gave a little of back high five to Pertha Robinson for getting the ball to him. He just didn't finish the play. He's making a little bit of a run here to get back into this game. I thought Arkansas was getting the momentum, strong momentum in their way. Nice ball movement by the Bulldogs. Nathan Brown trying to deliver. Claxton trying to help him. Scotty Thurman. Bring it up for Arkansas. Now Brown's got Williamson. They want to go inside to him if they can. Gorgeous picked up its defensive intensity. Maybe a little too intense. Nathan Brown with a foul. Brown was saying, hey, he pushed me first. That doesn't matter. Watch the pressure applied right here by Georgia. You're going to see, well, you won't see it in outside, but the foul's committed on the outside. You see the inside play. There it is right there. Dathan Brown, little bump of the shoulder. Pretty nice block. Uh-huh. Ray Golf could use him. I don't know if Ray's here tonight, but Vince Dooley is here. We saw him before the game. Proper to the free throw line. Rogers, 6'4", senior out of Birmingham, played at Walker Junior College in Alabama before moving on to Fayetteville. Last year had his career high against the Bulldogs. Started the game and ended with 25. Tonight he's got four, and the lead is back to six. There comes the trap right there. Nice move by Jackson to get out of it. Left it for Nathan Brown. Brown's had some good looks at the basket, just can't seem to get him to drop. And Jackson fights for the rebound, might want to time out if he can get it called. Jump ball, that's even better for Georgia. They get possession of the ball without losing that timeout. Well, Cleveland Jackson really skied that time to get the rebound. One of the things that Georgia's done well in this first half is go on that offensive glass. I continue to talk about that, but they really have done very well. Well, Virginia beats Georgia Tech 73 72. So Bobby Cremens' club again on that roller coaster. I think that's their 10th loss of the year. That it is. And they had a two point win over Wake Forest Saturday, which was a nail biter as Wake got a three pointer off at the buzzer that didn't go. Bobby's hair is going to continue to get grayer. <laughs> the discussion right now is about the shot clock, whether or not that should be reset. And they will leave it at 29. With 4.03 left in the game clock, first half. The difference is only six seconds. That might seem like a half an hour with this Arkansas defense. <laughs> then again, you might put it up right away. Claxton still fighting, trying to get that rebound. Arkansas finally pulls it down. Darnell Robinson for three. Air ball. Nolan Richardson not too crazy about his 6'11 freshman putting one up from downtown. Fans love it, though. Their team, though, down by six. <laughs> Super Tuesday with Arkansas by six, 343 left in the half. We've got more hoops coming up. 
on Thursday night. We'll start things off. SMU in Houston. You got that one, Larry. Yeah, Brad, I am going to be interested to go down there and talk to some people about the reaction about the Big 8 offer to the Southwest Conference. Houston not involved in that. UMass and Temple. They've got a punch counter in that one for Calipari and Cheney. And same story, really, for Cal and UCLA. I don't know if Al Bernstein's going to be in both those games or not, just to do a little extra color. But we've got a triple header Thursday night. All on ESPN. I'm just kidding. Well, everything will be, everybody will be on the up and up. Georgia's field goals have not been on the up and up. Two of them in the last 7-14 after starting so hot, they have cooled considerably. Changing that defense is what's caused it. Razorbacks have been all over them, forcing turnovers. Now Robinson picks up his dribble. You don't want to pick up your dribble against this club. Make your dribble take you somewhere. Nice pass. Jackson's open. He's had two of them go halfway in and come back out. And here come the Hogs on the run. Williamson wants it. McDaniel lost it out of bounds. Now Dillard in and McDaniel will sit. Georgia in desperate need of finding somebody who can put it in the hoop. Oh, Richardson happy that they haven't been able to. This game would be closer than it is. Still only a six-point game. We moved to the end of the bench. Got up and went to the other end. Gonna try a different spot. <laughs> Didn't like that Cherry was in. Dangerous cross court, no look pass. It worked. And Davis and Robinson play catch across the court. Brown finally gets one to pay off. He's had that move three times. This is the first time he dropped it. 32-28. I'm sure by now most of you have seen Alex Dillard play for Arkansas. If he gets an opening, the ball is going toward the hoop. So is it in this guy's hands, Scotty Thurman. I saw him get 26 against Kentucky, and he lit them up mostly in the second half. He had 83s last year for these Razorbacks. That was a school record. He's got two tonight. Yeah, Dillard may be on the way to breaking them. Jackson on the baseline, tough sled in there. Williamson got a piece of it, steal by Arkansas. Dillard, nice oh, pass in. What a great pass. Good lead pass to the basket, Al Dillard. And just when Georgia had gotten it down to four, all of a sudden it's the largest lead of the night at nine. They can put a run on you so quickly. Robinson with nowhere to go. A smart move to pull it back out. He went right back in again. Brown goes up to a foul. Darnell Robinson. No, it will not be Robinson. Scotty Thurman instead. Yeah, we talk about Corliss Williams and his play at both ends. Watch the block inside. Now, that was the defensive stopper. Scotty Thurman with a half-court pass. He gets it to Dillard. And who's on the other end? The guy who blocked the ball. Corliss Williamson. Can he run the floor? That's some serious hustle. It's a terrific basketball player you're looking at. So is that one. Lee Wilson comes in. Darnell Robinson goes out. We were talking about guys 6'7". At that size, Corliss Williams has got to be as good as anybody I've seen this year. Right? As strong as anybody, without a doubt. You know, coming out of high school, we're talking about Lee Wilson coming off the bench here. You know, he, he was one of the great players out of the state of Texas. Came up there and signed fully realizing that Darnell Robinson, who was the all-time scorer in prep history in California, had already signed. So they got two great centers last year. Davis on Diller tight and forced to turn over. Now Pertha Robinson by himself. Something Georgia needs to do more of. They need some defensive stops. 37-32, five-point game, a minute left first half. Georgia would love a defensive stop and a chance for more points before halftime. That would be pretty good shape for them. They got the stop. Whoa. Williamson and Claxton go down. Heard the Robinson just lost the basketball on the pressure from a 6'11 guy, Lee Wilson. Watch Claxton and Williamson. They really go to war right here. 
Yeah, no prisoners in that lane tonight. And then Charles said, whoa, Carlos hit, take this with you. <laughs> nice job of Max Chauvin officiating right there. You know, make sure everybody got it clean. Thurman off the inbound for three. Williamson trying to follow, and there's going to be a foul on Claxton inside. Carlos Williamson doing good work on that offensive glass. Claxton picks up his first foul. That's good for him. Normally gets him some foul trouble. Well, you like to see guys go to that rim. Coming up, 43 seconds is halftime, and with it, the Delta Fawcett halftime report. Take a look at Nova and Georgetown, Illinois, and third ranked Michigan, which preceded us. Clark's Concepts, the Virginia Georgia Tech overtime, and a lot more. John and Clark coming up 43 seconds from now. Carlos Williamson, 10 points on the night. Make it 11. And make it a seven point hog lead. Razor back to lead the Bulldogs 39 32. Put the hands, ball, the ball back in the hands of Bertha Robinson again. And this time, Scotty Thurman's got it. About a seven second difference, shot clock and game clock. Razor back's good to a straight man to man defense. They'll switch on this anytime they get a screen. Take it up. Those quick feet. Shot clock on the left. And now it's Arkansas. They will probably get the last chance. Rebounds. George has got a hurry. At the buzzer. Oh, very close by Bertha Robinson. He let it fly with a left hand and got it within range. But Corliss Williamson and company. 11.6 rebounds for the big fella has spotted the number one team in the land, a seven point advantage. Halftime in Athens, Arkansas 39, Georgia 32. Let's send it back to the studio and John Saunders. All right, Brad, thanks a lot. And I happen to like Core Lid for Cor Corliss Williams' new hairdo. <laughs> Welcome to the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. John Saunders here along with Clark Kellogg. It's already been a wacky night in college basketball. When we come back, we'll look at some wild finishes. Overtime in the ACC and a crazy one in the Big East. ESPN's exclusive coverage of NCAA basketball is brought to you by the people of Nike who encourage you to just do it. And by the all-new Ford Mustang. It is what it was. And more. Welcome back once again to the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. Arkansas is leading Georgia. We'll get back to the second half, but first, as promised, plenty of scores and highlights, and none finished any crazier than this one between Boston College and Pitt. BC looking to clinch a winning season, and Paul Evans with a new contract, but a five-game slide. Now look at this long pass. Gerard Abram trying to ice the game. He misses the layup, so Pitt comes back the other way. Zatiris Agalu. Knocks down a three-pointer and ties the game at 77 apiece. But Gerard Abram with another chance, dice the game. He misses the layup. Danier Abrams misses the layup. And Pitt coming back again with another chance. Jerry McCullough driving, gets fouled with seven seconds left, but it's not a shooting foul. They're not over the limit. Pitt talks it over, six seconds to go. Game is tied, try to get it in. And they lose the ball out of bounds. So Boston College will have one last chance at it. And who else but Gerard Abram throwing up a three-pointer and Boston College dodges the bullet, comes up with a win. BC clinching their first ever winning season in the Big East in 11 years. In the last 11 years, Billy Curley with 23 points and 12 rebounds as Boston College still has a chance to tie for first place in the conference. Georgetown and Villanova, two of the hotter teams in the Big East. Georgetown had won four in a row. Villanova had won six in a row. Joey Brown driving. Jason Lawson comes up with this block right there. Then Don Reed returns the favor on Eric Evers. Watch the timing of Alvin Williams. His hand gets there just as the ball does. Nice play, rejecting that shot off the window. Gary Kittles, that's a big three-pointer. It makes it an eight-point lead for Villanova. They start to pull away. Lawson with the nice move, and he gets fouled. Lawson had a very big game. Villanova, seven-game winning streak in the conference. First time they've done that since 84-85. 
when they knocked off Georgetown in the national championship game that year. Meantime, UConn clinches at least a tie for first place in the conference. 74-49, Danielle Marshall with 19 points and 9 rebounds, ending a game of 23 straight that he had at least 20 points or more. So the standings now look like this. Connecticut, as mentioned, clinching the tie. BC is alone in second place. Syracuse and Georgetown. Villanova with 9 wins. At one point, they were 2-6 and six coming in to that stretch of 7 consecutive wins. All right, Georgia Tech ranked number 23 in the nation, facing Virginia. Georgia Tech, a lot of people feel they are in the tournament because they've knocked off North Carolina two times this season. But just the same, they have a losing record. There's Bobby Kremens in the conference. Travis Best a little flustered there. Elbows Harold Dean got a technical and an intentional foul. Dean made all four free throws. Virginia up 646-40. Jason Williford with a little stick back there. 48-40, Virginia with the lead. Fred Benson off the inbounds three-pointer. 12-0, run. Virginia players are getting a little worried here as it goes into overtime. Robinson to Junior Burrow. Great pass to the one-hander. Virginia is up 71-67, but Travis Best driving, throws it up and misses. Virginia holds on to win it in overtime. 73 to 72. Yuri Barnes with 14 points and 10 rebounds for Virginia. Now eight and six in the conference and into that tournament likely. 14 and nine overall. Georgia Tech 14 and 10. Two wins over North Carolina, but just five and eight in the conference right now, Clark. But the thing that I have to ask you about the end of that game, there's about 25 plus seconds left for Georgia Tech to take that final shot. Mm -hmm. Should they have taken it sooner? I really think so, John. I think anytime you're in a position, you're down one, you're on the road, you've got that much time. Don't in, don't re decrease your margin of error by trying to get it in the last possession. See, they get this ball inbounds with 28 seconds to go, and Travis Best casually walking it up the floor. He's not going to get into his move until about the eight-second mark. And now you miss the shot. There's a wild scramble. The clock continues to tick. The possession arrow belongs to Virginia. By waiting that long, what you do is really don't, you don't give yourself any room for error. You don't give yourself any chance to have other options in case you miss the initial shot. I think you've always got to try to get two shots in that situation, a good drive hard to the goal, and then maybe a follow shot. Yeah, and even if you miss that <laughs> shot, you can foul. Exactly. Worst case scenario, you're only down three with a chance exactly. to tie it with a three-pointer. All right, also in the ACC, Wake Forest blowing out Clemson 80-69. Randolph Childress with 17 points there. Clemson has lost five of their last six, though. The win was against North Carolina. Temple holds off Duquesne 65-61. Rick Brunson with 31 points. Duquesne has lost twice to Temple by a total of six points. And UMass, a winner over St. Joseph's, 99-73. They've never lost at the Mullen Center. 99 points, the most they've had this year. We should remind you that coming up on Thursday, UMass against Temple. Now, we have the coaches on here. I think that's a little silly. The players will play this game. Bright and Rowe, McKee and Brunson. Let's talk about them. The controversy is over. The game is what is important at 9.30 Eastern time on Thursday. This halftime report is presented by the Delta Faucet Company. Delta, the way water is brought to life. Second half of Arkansas and Georgia still to come, but welcome back to the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. Let's pick up where we left off with scores and highlights. We began the night in the Big Ten, Michigan number three and the leaders in the conference. Steve Fisher, well, he's been to three Final Fours, but he still hasn't won the Big Ten Championship. Thinks he might get it this year. Jalen Rose gets the ball off the turnover, fakes out Wheeler and knocks it down. 13-point lead, then the baseline drive. This was Jalen Rose's night. Even Dave Bing was impressed, Clark. <laughs> Well, Michigan defense igniting the transition game. Rolls on the block of Shelly Clark. That's Ray Jackson trying to get to the cup. The long finger roll followed in nicely by Juwan Howard. Jalen Rose finishing with 24 points and eight rebounds. He had 17 in the second half. Michigan's won nine in a row. They're 7-0 at home in the Big Ten. And right now, most importantly, one game up in the loss column over Indiana for the conference race. Non-conference action, Missouri-Kansas City, a loser at Kansas State, 71-58. Their 13th straight non-conference victory. That is a school record. And Southern Miss facing Auburn in the SEC, 89, or rather this is a non-conference game, 89-73. Auburn, a four-game win streak. That is a season high. We'll continue with more. Army 
They've done it. They've won, ending a 31-game road losing streak, 87-76. They knock off Austin. Plenty more basketball this week. Seton Hall and Syracuse. Syracuse trying to stay in the hunt for possibly second place in the Big East. That's at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Then we move to the ACC. Duke ranked number two in the nation on the road at Florida State. That one should be a tough one for them. And also, it is closing in. The year has gone by so fast. Championship week begins March 5th. 34 games, 26 championships. You'll see the entire ACC tournament. Plus, we'll have our selection special. ESPN's exclusive coverage of NCAA basketball is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. The Coliseum in Athens at halftime. The number one team in the country leading the Georgia Bulldogs 39 to 32. Welcome back to the Coliseum, everybody. Brad Nessler and Larry Conley. Georgia jumped out to a nice lead, had it for about 10 minutes, Larry, but then too much Corliss Williamson and too much defense. Well, when you go with a strength, you go inside, and that's where Arkansas has their strength, Corliss Williamson. Watch again the way he maneuvers on the inside. You can't give this guy that much room. Bell backs off, thinks he's gonna, thinking he's going to block that shot. Forget it. Corliss Williamson will get it in. Corey Beck is the defender on this club. We talked about Clint McDaniel at the top of the show. Look at the great hands by Corey Beck. That's one play out front. Watch another play earlier in the first half where he runs down Shandon Anderson from behind and slaps it away. Corey Beck doing a terrific job of slapping the ball away from the dogs. You see the turnovers, Georgia with 13, and Arkansas able to turn those into points. Georgia, nice job on the offensive glass, as Larry talked about throughout the first half, has helped keep them in the ball game. They have not shot well either from the floor or from outside the arc from the floor. And Corey Beck has been a thorn in their side with a couple of steals, has taken a charge, and has taken charge of the ball game for Arkansas. Second half underway. Well, I might say also in those 13 turnovers for Georgia, there were seven Arkansas steals. Georgia opens up in his own defense. Interesting choice to begin the second half. Daniel for three. And a rebound by Cleveland Jackson. A push. White Stewart picks up the foul. The guy that got real hot for Georgia early was Shandon Anderson, and then he kind of disappeared after about the first six minutes. Arkansas made some adjustments in that defense, and they can do that. They'll find the player that's hot and shut them down. Never heard much of Anderson again after that initial six. I still think Georgia's got to find a way to free up Bernard Davis to let fly some threes. They're well, going to work on that right that's now. That's easier man. said than done. you got McDaniel and Beck chasing you. There goes one. Short, though. Thurman, uh, Davis not being able to get back, and that's what happens to you. See, what they do to you is the shooter, whoever is guarding the shooter, goes on the fly. He just takes off. It's the old NBA rule. Get out there and get it quick, and if they miss and get the rebound out, the guy's wide open. Arkansas matches its biggest advantage. A nine-point lead at one stretch in the first half. Collision is strong, and Beck, ball still loose. Scotty Thurman comes out of the pile with it, ahead to Beck. And he walked with it. Tenth Arkansas turnover, first one this half. Georgia had difficulty scoring in that first half. They were very strong in the first six or seven minutes. Couldn't do anything. First three minutes, they were three of five field goals. The last 17, eight of 24. I'll give you an example of how good that Arkansas defense has been. Here's Davis trying to get loose. Shannon Anderson lost the handle and got it back. Jackson alone. Got the three. Nope, two. two. Just inside the three-point line. It's his first basket. Carlos Williamson wants to take Claxton and does. Left it in the lane for Stewart. Nice drive. I subscribe to the fact that Carlos Williamson could do just about everything there is on the floor that you uh, do. I think you're right. Davis. Nice ball movement. Clax, or rather, Jackson gets the open jumper again. Boy, they need those open shots to fall. 
Just not going to get many chances. Arkansas will get to you quickly. Thurman off the dribble. He is so good at that. He'll dribble right up into your face until he bumps you and gets you a little advantage. Eight feet on the baseline and straight up. 25 34. the eyes always on the ball the footwork this time he just caught Davis on the back Bernard Davis wanted a three McDaniel got back on him. another rebound and here come the Razorbacks by Scotty Thurman everybody ran off and left him Hugh Durham wants a timeout right now to try to end this thing because it has reached a 13-point Arkansas advantage. We told you this one was over, but this is worth seeing anyway between Wake Forest and Clemson. Off the bank, iron, and then down and in. Wake Forest won easily, but that was worth a look. Ryan Larry. <laughs> a demon deacon of a shot. 47-34, Arkansas has got its biggest advantage of the ball game, 17-12 remaining. And it has been a slow second half for Georgia. One of six from the floor. Hugh Durham had some very choice words for Shandon Anderson over there. Defensive that trap inside and threw the ball away. And Georgia can ill afford turnovers. Anderson trying to go up with it off the glass. And Carlos Strong. And he drew a foul. Up his second. Right, for Georgia to get back into this basketball game, they really have to find some way to score. The defense of Arkansas has really put the pressure on them. And now that there's a reluctance, I think, on the part of the Georgia basketball team for anybody to put a shot up right. for fear of getting blown out. They really have that, that trepidation. You just don't feel like you want to get in and get involved in the offense. A couple trips ago, Bernard Davis gave up a three-pointer just because he hesitated for the split second and that is all it takes if you even think about it it's too late Carlos Strong seven points on the night let's have to do it on the defensive end right now too Arkansas having a lot of success going inside Guy can shoot it from anywhere. Good block. Good block by Jackson, but Thurman got it back. That was the bad news for Georgia. If you got to block it, block it away from him. <laughs> block it back into his hands. Thurman six for the half, 16 for the game. Davis has his shot blocked by Stewart. Jackson trying to throw it to Carlos. Charging foul. Out of control on the drive. Well, Arkansas's defense really playing well now. Once again, Davis with the basketball. Deliberate right here. Strom trying to go. And again, there's that man Beck taking another charge. We've got a timeout with 16.05 to play in the ball game. And the number one team in the land starting to look the part. And they will give you the 40 minutes of hell, and they have done that to Georgia now in this ball game. And there you see the numbers. Nine forced turnovers, 15 points off of turnovers. Everything going Arkansas's way right now. Corliss Williamson just took a long ball. Somebody threw deep, and he couldn't handle it before stepping out of bounds, so a turnover. We saw another game not somewhat like this in Baton Rouge last week. Yeah. It, where things were going very well for the Tigers. 31 points of well. Until Kentucky came back. And definitely the strangest game, one of the most remarkable games Larry and I have ever done. That was some kind of action last week with the three pointers down at Baton Rouge. Most incredible comeback I've ever seen. Carlos Strong just can't seem to get it to go. That one does. 
Chance for a three-point play. Well, they stayed with it that time. If Georgia had to get high marks again, I think it would probably be just their rebounding on the offensive window. You see right here, they go up and battle pretty good. Claxton's back at it. Strong's there, and he gets the roll, and has a chance for an old-fashioned three. Got it. 11 on the game for Carlos. 51-39. Claxton trying to go for the steal. And he'll pick up the foul. Claxton, who was able to play his way, he said, against LSU over the weekend, and he said the officials let us play, and Hugh Durham said with tongue planted firmly in cheek, well, he should learn how to read those officials before every game and how they're <laughs> going to call them. <laughs> nice feed in low to Crawford and the kick out to Thurman. Look at the ball movement by Arkansas. And Williamson at the end of it. I want to tell you what, if it ends up in his hands and there's seven guys around, it's going to go up and in. Well, John Saunders called it the core lid. I like that. Jackson in close. Again, the rushed shot. Corliss the outlet to Thurman. The pass skips off, and Bernard Davis got a hand on it. Right, it's another aspect of the defense that Arkansas throws at you. Oftentimes, if they don't get a turnover, nothing out of the double team or the trap, but they'll force a rushed shot. And that's just as good as getting a turnover because they get the rebound and the outlet pass like they did that time. Jackson will sit Steve Jones back in for the Bulldogs. Scotty Thurman with the lead playing very loose. You can just see that he wants the ball on offense. He's having fun on defense. Anderson got it to Davis. Bernard pushes it. Carlos Strong. Now that time the Arkansas team uh, double teamed up front and have anybody back. Williamson over Claxton. Charles got a piece of that one, maybe. Georgia can cut it to a 10-point Arkansas advantage if they score. Claxton on the hook. Georgia ball. A lot of battling going on inside. <laughs> I was looking for Bernard Davis to get out of the way in that lane when Claxton started to make that sweeping move for the hook shot. All I could see was a broken ankle down low. The smallest guy and the biggest guy, one in the air and one on the ground. Claxton will come out and Bell will come in. There's some weary soldiers out there right now. <laughs> the ball boys are as busy as anybody <laughs> trying to dry up the lane. Look at Bernard Davis right there. He had his hands. He was holding on to his side and grabbing his trunks in case he might be a little bit tired. Arkansas Press will do that to you. They got a fresh shot clock after that ball went out of bounds. We're under 14 minutes. 41, uh, rather 53, 41, Arkansas in front. So you can't take that ball into that corner down there. Arkansas very, very good at grabbing it. There's a second pass that Carlos Strong has not been able to come up with. The pass was there. He's got to bend over and pick it up. Jones made a nice bounce pass right there. It was about thigh high. He just didn't reach down and get it. Very same spot that one went past him earlier. Davis has it stripped away. Nice feed in low to Robinson. He's too strong with it, though. Ahead to Jones and now Strong. Carlos having all kinds of trouble finding the hand. Jones. Got that one. Found it. Still missed it inside. And now we have a situation. <laughs> <laughs> now who can jump up there and get that one? I know you and I aren't going after it. <laughs> I don't think there's anybody that can get that one. Hugh Durham's going to his bench. Maybe Dathan Brown can get up that high. <laughs> Well, they got to get another ball or a pole to knock it down. There it, there comes. it comes. 
Little ingenuity right there. Roger, Roger Crawford, Crawford jumped yeah. up, hung on the rim for a second, rattled the whole backboard, and got it to come down from the backside. <laughs> Remots is checked back in for Arkansas. So it's Thurman, Remots, Crawford, Robinson, and Wilson. A much different lineup. And less experienced lineup for the Razorbacks. Scotty Thurman guarded closely by Jones. Jones stripped it from him from behind, and now he'll get it on the other end. Good job by Steve Jones both ways. And that's reminiscent of what Arkansas usually does to you. Three Steve comes threw it up. away and then he threw it right back to him. Scott Thurman calls a timeout as Nolan Richardson's up off the bench. He's seen about all he wants to see of a Georgia comeback that has cut the lead to 10. Top-ranked Arkansas by 10 with 12:31 left. Top-ranked Arkansas the. Second time around with a 20 and 2 mark, then it's Duke. Duke has Florida State tomorrow night on ESPN. Then Michigan. Michigan a winner tonight over Illinois, North Carolina, and UConn a winner tonight. There's your top five. Interesting to see those February losses right yeah. there. Two losses for three of those five clubs. Usually at this time of the year, if you've got a good solid basketball team, you don't see clubs losing twice in a month. This is a wacky season, though. It really is. Georgia's defense has been stepped up a little bit. They've been considerably showing considerably more pressure in the last three minutes. Have they ever? As we're down to 10 on the shot clock. Corey Beck back in there though to lead the Chargers for Arkansas. Try to push one through the lane. One second left. McDaniel at the buzzer it's short. And Nathan Brown has to fight for a true rebound. That shot counted. So the rebound did as well. Georgia can get it to single digits with a basket. That's where they can't afford to turn it over. Well, Ar did you see how quick Arkansas was to that ball? Simply fall down and you got two red jerseys on top of you before you can move. Williamson looking to Nolan Richardson on the bench for the instructions and now with 10 on the shot clock Beck lost the handle but Shannon Anderson got him in loop. That's three on Shannon Anderson. Nolan Richardson's taken six straight Arkansas teams to the NCAA tournament. And now the two sides are having a couple of words and the officials get in there quickly to make it the two groups of five. Well, they were each trying to have a huddle in the same location. Squatters rights. Whoever gets there first. <laughs> Georgia's home court. I don't know <laughs> what the rights are, but <laughs> right. Anderson looking on. Hugh Durham. Would love to somehow pull an upset at home. Oh, right look at this. By 10. Great Big block by Bell, but a foul as well. Well, Pertha Robinson just lost Clint McDaniel. This is what you get got calling Look at this. ball and body. I mean, Robinson had no clue as to where he was. Unfortunately, Bell was there to reject it. He didn't know he gets the foul. It would have been an easy layup. There was two bells there, Terrell on the block and the ringing of the bell by Clint McDaniel, who got one right in the chest on the follow through. So Clint will go to the free throw line. Three of his points this half. Out those three games with a dislocated shoulder, suffered in the Mississippi State game. And since he's been back, their tough defense, he and Corey Beck, have been back. But he misses the second free throw. 11 point game, 11 to go. Daniel all over Perth Robinson. Robinson did a pretty good job of handling it right now. Leaves it out for Dathan Brown for a jumper, and he got it. Uh, Jim Robinson credit for keeping that dribble alive and getting the ball outside. I think he's done a better job of that tonight than Bernard Davis has. That's why Davis is on the bench right now. It's in single digits for the first time in a long time. Since it was 41 to 32, in fact.
Williamson lost it off the dribble. And Arkansas lost it to the Bulldogs. Arkansas seems a little disoriented right now. Jones stripped by McDaniel. Fans wanted a foul call. They may have had an argument, but... Nolan Richardson telling the officials that Corey Beck got one in the eye. He got whacked pretty good, too. Down in that corner down there, you can see. Hard to tell if it's watering because of all the sweat he's got on his face. Robinson's in that corner. I tell you, you cannot take the ball into the corner on this club. They trap you so well. Nice feed in low to Shannon Anderson. Chance for a three-point play. Well, both of these clubs having some success on out-of-bounds plays. Hugh Durham continues to have Bernard Davis on the bench. Good pass by Brown Anderson right there, and Corliss Williamson with a little bump as he went up. Corliss Williamson with three fouls, and Shannon Anderson, the three-point play opportunity, misses. Bell trying to keep it alive, but Williamson wins that battle. Got to hit the free throws. You're going to win. Something George is not very good at. Nice pass by Beck. Thurman score. Oh, Beck just ever, ever alert looking inside, finding Scotty Thurman. Bad spacing right there. They need to get a little bit, a little bit more wider spacing down inside to make that pass there. There's that trap in the corner again. Bell loses it out of bounds. Bulldogs picking up their 19th turnover. We got the Blackhawks and the Sabres coming up Friday night, 7.30. It is National Hockey League night on ESPN. Look for that one. Here we've got a 56-47 Arkansas advantage. The top-ranked team in the land being pushed by the Georgia Bulldogs with nine minutes, ten seconds left. Still a lot of time for Georgia. Oh, he loves that spot. I'm telling you, six to eight feet right on the side of the basket. Scout, he's got 20. Bertha Robinson takes it all the way. And a foul on Beck. Robinson might be lucky that's a foul on Beck. Well, Robinson had nowhere to go with the basketball. He just jumped in the air and just flung it out there. There was nobody around. Watch this. Coming right at you. Look at all the Arkansas defenders. Beck, pretty good position that time. John Cloverty he didn't think so. Especially when Robinson turns his oh, back. Oh, there he goes. Yeah, he made the little move while he was in the air. Davis back in for Georgia. But Jones, Robinson, Strong, Flaxton. Three-point attempt. Bernard Davis. Flaxton keeps it alive, goes back up, and he drew the foul. McDaniel picks up his third. Charles Claxton in a good position for the rebound that time. Oftentimes when you get a shot from the corner like that, two things are going to happen. It's going to hit the front and go long, or it's going to hit the front and come straight back. Claxton got the position on the other side. He got the good rebound. And he's going to walk to an area he doesn't really like very much. Seven-foot junior. There's what he's done on the year. On the strike. Tonight, one for four. And he's worked hard tonight. Perspiration, sweat, blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah, use the glass when in doubt. Rattle that one off the window for the free throw. His first point of this half. Well, Brad, still 8.36 left to play in this game. I mean, Georgia's not totally out of this yet. But Arkansas very capable of putting together an 8-10 to 10 point run, and they can put this one away in a hurry. Georgia's defensive stops might be as important as their offense right now. Stewart battled for that rebound. He missed in close. And a jump ball. Georgia ball. You know something Arkansas does a lot? 
on rebounds, they really get around the guy who, go, who brings the ball down. They'll double team. That time they triple team inside. Now watch the rebound by Georgia and watch the convergence here by the Arkansas players. And he has nowhere to go. Look, now three guys are there. He can't make an outlet pass. They're very good at that. Too many teams just think that's a gimme. Just get out of the guy's way after he got the rebound. I'll tell you what, if you're going to play Arkansas, you better outlet that ball quick because they're going to come and get you. Nathan Brown threw up an air ball as he had the double pump. Carlos Strong throws up a second shot. Now Claxton. Three chances, none of them very good for the Bulldogs offensively. Good work by Arkansas. They stayed right with it. Georgia with a valiant effort. Yeah, there's a lot of bodies flying around down inside. Both teams go to their bench. Terrell Bell will come in for Claxton. Seven minutes and 46 seconds left in this one. Frank Arkansas with a 10-point lead. They've led by as many as 15 this half. Georgia trying to lose full court pressure of their own right now. Look who brings it down, White Stewart. If you go man to man, Stewart good enough to handle the basketball. You're going to get a big guy gardening. You usually can't keep up with him. He'll shoot a three too if you let him come around a pick. He almost let it fly right there. Ball picked up by McDaniel with seven on the shot clock. This is where you got to play great defense. Look at that move. Oh. Oh, he is so good at that little floater. 22 for Scotty Thurman. And the lead back to a dozen. They call him the Rustin Rifle. With good reason. Carlos Strong. Just not a good jump shot, but touched by someone, says Jim Burr, so maybe that was the reason. Yeah, I was going to say, that's pretty tough to shoot an air ball from the free throw. So the shot clock remains at 19. What's the double team? the shot clock gonna have to hurry Nathan Brown Carlos Strong did he get it back in time no that one the three-point attempt by Strong didn't hit anything the shot clock continued to run and Strong try as he might to get that back up before the buzzer went off couldn't get it in in time good job again by the Arkansas defense Georgia's going to get back into this affair. They're going to have to get some stoppers here. Well, they got one there. Offensive foul. If it's on Williamson, it's four. It is, and it is. Jim Burley official immediately pointed to Terrell Bell to make sure that they had the right guy shooting after what happened in Nashville over the weekend. And what Britt Patino did wow. with his three players. Suspended them for tomorrow night's game against Tennessee. Travis Ford, Jamel Martinez, and Prickett. Jared Prickett yeah. will not be involved tomorrow. Arkansas sell 13 of their 22 opponents under 40%. And Georgia, you can see in the second half, has had all kinds of trouble. And the free throw line continues to be a big problem as well. Although Strong with a rebound gives them another chance. Nathan Brown. Bell gets bumped. Georgia ball. Claxton back in for Bell. Williamson goes out of the lineup uh, and immediately Hugh Durham substitutes and brings Claxton in for Bell. So Darnell Robinson and Claxton now. It's a better matchup, I think, right. for Georgia. Claxton's foot speed can't hang with Williamson, although he's got the size advantage. Brown over Stewart. 60-50. They 
Davis almost got that one. Loose ball, Georges. Claxton the outlet to Brown with Thurman to beat. Thurman stripped him of it, but he also fouled it. Even though that was a foul, that just shows you the great hands of Scotty Thurman. Scotty Thurman was in full retreat this time as Brown tries to make it to the basket. You see that little look to the left just before he went up? He knew he had to get there quickly because Scotty Thurman is renowned for those quick hands. It's Dathan Brown. Ten points on the night. Perfect from the free throw line as well. Five for five. It's been a real battle tonight. It really has. Georgia is making top-ranked Arkansas work for it. That's for sure. The game with Georgia looks tomorrow. If they were to lose this game, the free throws have killed them. Scotty Thurman, a three-pointer, and so has that guy. 15 and a half, 25 for the game. Stewart knocked it away. Thurman ahead if Crawford can run it down. And they did. Great play. Crawford to back to Thurman to Stewart. Was that great hustle? I mean, this Arkansas team is all over this floor. And again, they go back to their half-court game. Good patience being shown right now, I think, by the Razorbacks. And oftentimes, a lot of people around the country think that at a 96 game per game clip that this team really can't back off and play a half-court game. They can. Stewart for three. And if you're a Georgia fan, you say, ouch, right there. Back to 15, 66-51. Davis to Claxton, he's double and foul. Coming up Thursday, we've got a triple header for you on ESPN. First, it's SMU and Houston to get things going at 7.30, then the rematch of UMass and Temple, number 11 against number eight, and then Cal and UCLA, two top 20 clubs as well will square off in the Pac-10. That's at midnight. Triple header Thursday right here on ESPN. Interesting rematch of the Mass Temple game. And all the confrontation earlier on between John Chaney and John Calipari. And obviously that's all passed and over with. Time to get on with the second game. It should be a good one. Those two clubs are very, very good. Charles Claxton to the free throw line. With two of five from the strike. Sometimes you want to reach out and help a guy get the free throw. <laughs> Eight rebounds, though, on the night. That one had the rotation. 14-point Arkansas lead, and we are approaching the four-minute mark. Brad Nessler and Larry Conley at the Coliseum in Athens, Georgia. SCC Super Tuesday battle. I'm not going to say it's insurmountable, but I'm not sure that uh, Georgia can fight back up this hill. Arkansas takes pretty good care of that basketball. Scotty Thurman tipped in by Crawford. Hugh Durham wanted an offensive interference violation and didn't get it. Ball's below the rim. It was a good tip, man. Crawford got it. Reached it up, pushed it in. And Davis picked up his dribble. Nowhere to go. Stripped away by Crawford from behind. Arkansas now beginning to play like they are the number one team in the yep. country. This club's building a lot of confidence. They're five points away from being or having a perfect season. I think this is the fifth time I've done an Arkansas game. And they have looked pretty darn good in about four and a half of them. <laughs> They're not always perfect, but they find a way to get the job done. Look at Stewart. Stewart. Off the dribble. That's a guy 6'9 and 200 and some high change. Doing that kind of move to the basket. Foul going to be on Dorna Robinson. Brad, really, when you take
take a look at this Arkansas team. I mean, I've, I've watched them all year long. I had them when they beat Missouri so badly in December. And I've watched them come through January and February. And this is a basketball team that experienced a number of key injuries. They had Clint McDaniel out for three games, and they had Darnell Robinson out for seven games. You know what? They fought through it. And I think they've become a better basketball team for it because there were other players who had to step in and play when those guys were out. And I think they had some key reserves, and Nolan Richardson took big advantage of it. The team is going to get better and better. I'm not sure I've seen a defense any better than theirs this year. Yeah, you're right. Nathan Brown gets the second with two minutes, 46 seconds remaining in the ball game, And it's Arkansas with a 71-52 lead. Well, they're still going to be number one when this one's over. Will they advance a long ways when the season is over? Here's what some of the past number ones at the end of the season have gone on to do. Arizona and Oklahoma lost. UNLV lost. Duke went on to win a championship, and Indiana lost a regular final to Kansas. And Arkansas, what will they do? Well, they're going to still be number one when this evening is over, and they will add to their winning streak, which will reach nine games. And pick up their 21st win against two losses, 11 and two in the Southeastern Conference. And they're only gonna be one win away in the SEC from wrapping up at least a share of the crown with this victory tonight. Right, a lot of people around the country may not realize this, but the SEC champion is determined by the season winner. And already Arkansas has beaten Florida and they have beaten Kentucky, so if there were any kind of tie involved, would have to go to Arkansas. And they are two games up in the loss column over Alabama, a team that is one of the two that has defeated Nolan Richardson Club. And that was 66-64. The other loss, Mississippi State 72-71. So as Larry said, another basket here or there, and maybe they're undefeated. But they did have a couple close wins, too, so I guess everything evens off. They have shown how strong they are tonight when they were pushed by Georgia. Anytime you can go on the road and win, that's big. Came in here two years ago and lost. And since then, it's been three Arkansas wins in a row, including in the SEC tournament uh, last year. Tiger underneath just checked in for Georgia. Chris Tiger with a basket. 15 point ball game with 90 seconds to go. What you're probably going to see is Georgia simply play out the string. Good dish inside. The Arnell Robinson. Good pass by Al Dillard. Comes free to Ty Wilson. And Wilson got the shooter's goal. Got a three out of it. His first basket of the night. They could have used a lot more of those threes earlier. Georgia's going to fall to 12 and 13, 6 and 7 in the conference. And this maybe puts a uh, dent in their NIT hopes, although they still have games left that they feel they can win and get in the NIT. Traveling violation inside on Lee Wilson. Ty Wilson again, got another one. Keep nailing threes, they just can't catch up, gonna run out of clock. They get a steal, now they need a three in a hurry. That's the guy. Shannon Anderson goes back up and drew a foul. It'll be on the Wilson. Nolan's still coaching. Up by 11. Anderson can actually get it down into single digits if he can hit both free throws. It's 11 points for Shannon Anderson. Chris Myers and Dan Patrick are only about 20 seconds away. We'll be sending to the guys. They'll have you updates on the Knicks and Sonics. That crazy Pittsburgh Boston College finish. We'll see how Michael's doing with the bat. All that on Sports Center, 20 seconds from now. So he went deep the other day. Finally hit one out. 
fastball thigh high. <laughs> Hertha Robinson with a foul on Crawford. One of the interesting stats I was reading in the uh, Arkansas notes was the fact that winning percentage among active coaches with at least five seasons, Nolan Richardson ranks fifth. Smith, Williams, Cheney, Bayheim, the only ones above him. That's pretty good company. This guy has done a terrific job of coaching. Yes. Crawford, free throw line. Well, a lot of the fans are leaving, maybe heading over to the uh, between the hedges to get ready for football season. First day of spring practice today, and Eric Zier, no doubt, one of the preseason Heisman Trophy candidates for next year, in attendance tonight, was here to pick up a couple of awards. And he's watched Georgia with a lot of pressure on Arkansas. Ty Wilson, where was he early? But in the end, it's going to be the 21st win of the season for the Razorbacks. They just had too much defense for Georgia tonight, and the Bulldogs had too many dry spells where their offense went away from them. They come back and make it respectable. In fact, make it a nine-point loss is all at home. But Nolan Richardson's Razorbacks go to 11 and 2 in the conference, 21 and 2 overall, and they hang on to that number one spot that's been so elusive to so many teams this year. But the second trip around for Arkansas has been a good one. This is their second week at number one, and they win it 74-65. For Larry Conley and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Brad Nessler. Thanks for watching. So long from Athens, Georgia. Sports Center is coming up next. ESPN's exclusive coverage of NCAA basketball has been brought to you by Cadillac and your Cadillac dealer, creating a higher standard. And by the great taste of Diet Pepsi. You've got the right one, baby. Uh-huh.